All right, welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, I'm so excited that I have Christy on today, and she is going to just share her story. She is um, an immigrant to New Zealand. She's from Australia, lived in Canada, and um, now lives in New Zealand and just loves it. So we've been talking on social media, and I was like, let's get on the channel, and you just kind of share your experience, share what you like about New Zealand, and so I'm glad to have you. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here, and yeah. Anytime I can give ups to New Zealand, I will take the opportunity for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so great. So, okay. So I believe that you just said you had 10 years in marketing in Sydney and three yes. years in Canada and Vancouver. Okay. And then Vancouver, what made you yeah. move from Vancouver to New Zealand? Well, I was dating a Kiwi um, oh, and well, someone said it. <laughs> yeah, someone said to me when we very first started dating, just be really careful because all Kiwis want to go home. And I always oh. had that kind of sitting in my mind. And we, um, yeah, we moved to Vancouver together in 2019, oh, I think, 18. And we both sort of were at the point in our careers where, you know, we were just about to turn 30, kind of visa options were running out. Mm. And we, honestly did not give it that much thought come to think of it we not, neither of us had been to Vancouver it honestly was insane um but okay, so we did you meet in Australia yes we okay. met at work in okay, cool. so many of my friends joked that I never would have met anyone unless he was in the office so that's how it ended up working out um so we thought okay <laughs> well <laughs> let's up sticks and go and live a few years abroad and you know sort of do that. And we were really lucky to both get really good um, jobs. I work in fintech. So I got a marketing director role in a fintech company and my partner is a software engineer and worked for Lululemon, which is, you know, Vancouver all over. So we had the best time and honestly probably would have stayed there had it not been for the pandemic and it been just so far away. Um, so we ended up being like, how did that not affect you? Well, the funny thing is I've spent colder nights in Sydney because at least in Canada, oh. they cater for it. Yes. In Sydney, Thank you. Do. Yes. I never owned a warm coat until I moved to Canada because in Sydney, it's all about heels and throwing a little cape over your shoulders and trotting around the CBD. Not so much in downtown Vancouver. Um, but yeah, we, we really loved it. We got permanent residency actually. And I think mm. our plans were kind of to settle there, but yeah, with all of the world upheaval, not to bore everyone, but we thought, sort of thought, okay, well, we need to head home somewhere. And it was very much a conversation between, you know, Australia and New Zealand. I'm Australian, the Kiwi, and I loved Sydney. It's such a thriving. Oh my gosh, I love Sydney. I love <laughs> Sydney. I've been there so many times just because it's literally my favorite. It does not disappoint. I love it. It just, I call oh, it Sizzle sorry. City. Like it's just like the beating heart of the country. And the thing about it is though, you are there and you very much get caught up in, I'm a very graspy person. So you're mm. hanging around with lots of people who are earning lots more money. Then you want to earn more money. Then you want a bigger job title. Then you want to live in a bigger suburb. And before you know it, you're earning double what you could earn in New Zealand, but you feel like a have not when actually you're really, really fortunate. And when it comes to things like looking at buying a home or, just the lifestyle that you have to lead and the work hours that you need to have, it just sort of didn't feel as conducive to the next phase for one of a better phase. term of right. our lives. Um, and I knew how much I would love the peddly nature of it and mm. I would get, really, you know, into that and I knew that would probably wear my partner down. So we, everyone thinks it was his idea to move to New Zealand, but it was actually my suggestion. And we moved to Auckland. Um, we've got no friends or family here. Um, Dan's family is down in the Waikato. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, my workplace, my head office is down in Wellington. But it just felt to me like a really miniature, miniature version of Sydney. It felt mm. as close as we get. And we talked about other locations in Australia, but you'll speak to most Sydney siders and they're like Sydney or nothing, like nothing else feels like a city. Melbourne would have been just as big a move as Auckland, to be honest, because mm. we didn't really know it there as beautiful as it is and it's cold. So yeah, we sort of bit the bullet and moved back to beautiful Tamaki Makoto, Auckland about almost three years ago now. 
Oh my goodness. Okay. I just have to say a couple of things. First of all, the way that you're describing like working and living in Sydney, this is exactly how I felt every time. Cause I've been to Sydney a couple of times, Melbourne, the gold coast. I've been kind of everywhere. Um, not everywhere. I mean, Australia is big, but you get it, you know? So yeah. the main things, but I, I just, Australia is so much more like America than New Zealand is. Yes. Would you I agree with that? that? I mean, I don't know if you spent a lot of times in the States, but every time I went there, I was like, why would I move here? I should just move home. I could not agree more. And particularly because I was working with Canadians, but we were very much a North American outfit. So I worked with wow. a lot of Americans. Right. And even more so when we kind of moved home and I was in Australia for about a couple months before we moved back to New Zealand. And even in the years that we had gone, it had even the news looked more like American news. Mm. The attitudes had really shifted in a way that quite surprised me when I came home. Mm. Um, it just, it is very American. And I thank God every day that I had Vancouver to kind of tamp me down before I let loose on New Zealand, or I would have made an enemy of half of the North Island because the way we operate in Sydney is very American. It's very transactional. It's very business-like. Very. Mm-hmm. I would have been so hot and just alienated half the company. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's a really good point. That is so true. They do find us very grating. And actually, I think, honestly, probably the, I put two challenges among the many great things of living here in NZ. One of them is that they find us very grating. Mm. And mm-hmm. I didn't know how Australian I was, <laughs> but yeah. definitely I found it a far bigger cultural shift to move here than I did to move to Canada and work with North Americans in general. Oh, and that's a lot of totally people. I can totally see that. I can, but. I mean, I'm not even in, I'm not even in Australia for work or anything. I was there on holiday mostly, but I mean, I'm like making business deals. <laughs> Everybody yeah. is just like, so into it. Like even the resort I was staying at, I'm like, tell, let me tell you what you could do. We'll just hear. And he's like, oh my gosh, can we talk? You know? And I'm just like, what am I doing? I'm on vacation. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no, I just really got along with Australians. <laughs> Somebody said to me once, and it was a really great analogy, is like particularly because the Kiwi Canadian thing used to come up a lot because we lived mm. there, like oftentimes it's that they're always looking up and Australia looks up to America and New mm. Zealand hates us, but for want of a better term, look up and kind of think, you know, they do see us mm. more, they say very grating, but they do see the aspirant side. They also just hear about how much money everyone earns and assumes it's just so much greater. Um, but it is a very different. And I think particularly when you travel interstate as well, like I always lived in New South Wales and that's a different universe from Queensland, which is a very different universe from Western Australia. Um, and that was one thing I sort of had never thought about. New Zealand doesn't have states. It's right. New Zealand. Like it's not a lot of that. Five million people. Here we go. <laughs> Not a lot of that division. So I knew, yeah, if we moved back to Sydney, we would be living a very different life. But I think the through line for both of us is we would have been doing really well, but feeling like we still wanted more. Mm. Whereas here in New Zealand, we just feel really lucky with everything we have every day. Oh, yeah. That's totally the attitude. Like, why would you want more? Everybody's quite satisfied. Everybody's quite content with things. And in fact, don't like to talk about like, because I've been to like wineries and I've been like, I don't understand why you don't open up a couple other of these. And they're like, why would I do that? Yeah. I'm looking for more work. (laughs) Have December and January off, mate. Like, what are we, what am I doing? (laughs) That's so interesting. the, The values are very, um, very different, but far more really? like when we really yeah. sat down and thought about it, far more aligned with what we, yeah, the way we sort of wanted to live and not even how we were living, to be honest. And I feel mm-hmm. like somewhere like Sydney, oh, it's the best place in the world when you're in your 20s. You couldn't get a better place. You oh, like, yes, that's it's true. It's just so much energy and so amazing. But yeah, the older my friends and I get, and I've had a few friends move away because they're just like, we can't even afford daycare. Mm. We don't know our neighbors. Like there's all this great stuff to do, but we're at home with little kids. Like we're not doing any of it, but we're paying this premium and oh, work expecting there, you know, all the time and to not be a mom. And I meant to parent, like I don't have a job. Whereas here you're like, you know, we have slots in the calendar for people to do school pickup. I know. It's so great. Yeah. It's not even a question. It's not even, doesn't look, you don't look down on because you have to go pick up your kid, but like, yeah, it's just the values are like 
ingrained in the culture are just very different. Work-life balance, like taking enough time off, making sure that you have time with your family, like the whole culture, even the education system is set up like that, like no homework. And like, you should be with your family. Sports don't go all night, every night. It's just, it's a different world. Yeah. It really is. And it was a big shift when I got here. And actually I remember um, I was in a taxi probably for work. I was down in Wellington and I just moved here and the cab driver said, oh, where are you from? He knew they can all spot Australian accents. They'll say it to you pretty quickly. Oh, They'll go, you yeah. me. And I said, oh, I'm from Australia. He said, yeah, I could tell. Um, I said, oh, no, I've moved here. I said, actually, you know, we've just moved up to Auckland. I'm just down here for work. And he said, I'll give you a tip. Hmm. You probably are not going to find many other Australian expats here to hang out with. He said, you probably know lots of Kiwis from being in Australia because they all go over there, hmm. but not come here. So just keep that in mind when you're making friends because you might really struggle to find other Aussies. And he was right. Hmm. Really? Yeah, not I guess that makes sense. Yeah. This move. Hmm. yeah, interesting. Even though if you have an Australian passport, you can come and live and work in New Zealand and yes. you get all of the social benefits. It doesn't work the other way, but um, that's great. Oh, no, it does. It does work the other way. No, it so does, have... but like a New Zealand citizen doesn't get access to your health care. It does. It's a couple of years until they're, they have that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, you land here and they're like, live, work, stay. I remember right. even it's amazing. buying our house. Like it came up right at the end of the settlement process of the house that I was Australian because my passport was on the table. And I said, oh my God, that's not going to be a problem, is it? And he's like, hell no. If Australians want to spend money here, we'll take it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like oh, okay. Well, I guess that's good news for us. Oh my <laughs> gosh. I love that. I love that. So what have you like noticed differently, like work culture? I feel like the work culture was very different. I mean, I'm American. I, I haven't lived in Australia. Was work culture was very different or are there some kind of cultural things that were an adjustment for you? Every single part of all. <laughs> okay. Of okay. I'm glad I'm not the only one. No. And like, but in the most beautiful way. So obviously yeah. I had been to New Zealand probably six or seven times before moving here, mm. obviously lived with a Kiwi for like six or seven years at that point. Um, so I wasn't unaware, but it's not until you actually move here right. that you really absorb it. Like when you come here, you walk under that beautiful arch at the airport yeah. and you hear all this beautiful toreo and you hear this music and you're like, oh my God, this feels like a culture that's alive. And in Australia, very badly, we can't say the same. So that struck me. But I thought the biggest one, first of all, was the use of te reo in everyday language, particularly in the workplace. And mm -hmm. I very quickly was like, I'm going to have to learn some te reo. Like, obviously, not be fluent, but my partner didn't even realise how many words he knew because oh. we've been living away so long. So... You know, my first one was, I think the CEO sent me a note going, I loved, you know, whatever you did just there. Awesome mahi. And I was like Googling like mahi. Oh, work. Okay. Awesome right. work. <laughs> nice. Um, and now I'm very good because I. Yeah, you sound good. Three years. I'm really going to have to, uh, like, because they just kind of stitch it into everyday language. Mm -hmm. And yeah, my partner, he didn't realize how many words he knew. And we used to do like going driving because I really it was really important to me to get the pronunciation right. We would practice on road signs. And it actually is much easier to learn here because all of the like vowels, they all sound the same or have the same inflections. Right. Whereas in Australia, you can have three different sounding A's. So oh. it's really hard to learn. <laughs> like, oh, geez. So at least here I got reasonably good at that. And I think in terms of work culture, just their genuine openness. Like I took a role that I had sort of other experience outside of that role and I was very careful not to just say, oh, I've kind of done that. I know how to do that. They were just like, no, if you have any thoughts over and above your pay grade, like bring them to us. Like we're all one team. Oh, we're all working together. Like, and just their genuine kindness. So I think 10 weeks into my new job, my appendix ruptured. Oh, and I I thought, um, okay, if I was in Sydney, I'm still in probation. I'll have no job in two weeks. No, totally. Exactly. That's how it rolls. And not only did I not lose my job, I got 
messages from, we have three CEOs directly from them, from many of the ELT, from my boss. And I came home to this huge bunch of flowers at my apartment and they told me to take 10 days off. No, I know. Yeah. And they're just like, are you sure you're okay to come back? Yeah. And I just thought, not only am I not going to get sacked, they checked in on me. They let me do four day weeks for a couple of weeks while I worked up to it. Like they're just the most beautiful people. And I've never, ever had, you know, obviously working with people, it's not, you will have like differences of opinion and things, but I've never had a negative experience. And I don't know whether it's just my company and it might be, but they're just the most glorious human beings. And I often will fly down to Wellington. And every time I go into our marketing floor, every single colleague who I work directly with comes up and gives me like the biggest hug and says, oh my God, it's so lovely to see you. Okay, let's go get a coffee, pop your bags down. Still three years later. Wow, really? Isn't that just beautiful? That's really great. I mean, I always had good experiences, but I did find that as time went on, it was more of, you know, there's a lot of, of, you know, there's Kiwi nice, but it wasn't always what they actually thought. Yes. Yeah. I think that probably is true for the rest of the country, but in this company, I'm like, no, these people are just really nice. Oh my gosh, kind of, so great. Yeah. They're gorgeous. Gorgeous. So I think for us, 90% of why we bedded in here after 12 months, because we gave ourselves time to go like, is this where we want to be? Was that we both found jobs that really spoke to our skills. We really appreciated and valued our colleagues. And for me specifically, it didn't feel like a um, step backward because in my industry, New Zealand produces some of the best creative in the entire world. Oh, agreed. And now I'm in work for Air New Zealand. I know. And now I'm in this sort of industry. I know I can now see how it happens because everyone is just so invested and no idea is a bad idea. And if something's too much money, someone knows someone where you can make it happen. Yep. And it, oh, nothing yeah, is do it themselves. Yeah, yep, totally. So yeah, it's been really great professionally for me as well. But you probably made less money than Australia. Half. Half? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's a that's an interesting a big point. difference. Yeah. So it's a big, big difference. So my partner, he didn't take as much of a hit. Mm-hmm. That being said, I did step back my role a okay. bit. But still, even this role in Sydney would probably be three quarters to a half. What I would say though is it was completely demoralizing upon entry, (laughs) but the joy I get out of the job does really make up for that. And the flexibility that I take advantage of makes up for that. And it wasn't until we really started trying to save for our first home that I realized, yes, I earn less money, but the amount of things I don't feel like I need here. Oh, that is a great point. It's enormous, like enormous from the three day hens weekends to the, like, if you make regular normal friends here, you're not doing any of that. And it made it really easy for us to save because we didn't feel like we were missing out on that much. And I feel like in Sydney, we would have felt like, okay, we live in this great city and everyone is out and we're just seeing them all at, you know, all these great restaurants or going all these great holidays. And again, you would feel like a have not, whereas here, no one notices if you buckle down for 12 months and you only pop, you know, pop out for lunch every now and again. And I would say, you know, just things like the hair and the makeup and the clothes oh, and the trip, so true. And the, like all of that, no one really cares. Nobody, so you can, like literally like, doesn't care. Like people wear the same thing every day. Like I'm like, I've seen those pants all week, you know, and I love that. I'm not saying that as a bad thing. Like I love it. It just takes all that away. You know? It does. And Auckland's a little bit different in that like people will kind of give it a bit, but it's not yeah. the designer handbag. It's one good handbag. One. Or, right. you know, like, yeah, one good They'll winter fix coat. Things. They won't just like get a new thing, you know? And I was like, oh, we're going to fix shoes. Okay. I oh, love it. The biggest, the biggest thing, like we inherited a vacuum cleaner from my partner's papa who had sort of maybe run into it with the car once or twice, you know? And I remember Dan Googling the the piece to replace it. I thought, I wouldn't even think to do that. We would just chuck it out and buy a vacuum cleaner. Gosh, it's so true. Have you ever oh, Googled a vacuum cleaner part? Of course you haven't. We don't <laughs> go like that. The only scarcity we really had in Aussie was water. So I'm really funny about water. Funny about <laughs> Other water. Than that, yep. 
So while we have less money, what we can afford here, like we were able to buy a three bedroom home with a backyard. There's no way in hell, even earning double both of us in Sydney, we would have been able to get anywhere close to that. Really? Oh, that's Not anywhere we'd want to live. Not anywhere yeah. we'd want to live. Like no, we're yeah. kind of okay. about nine or 10 Ks away from the Sky Tower. In yeah. Sydney, we would have been an hour and a half away and doing that commute. Sydney's massive. It is. It's massive. It's so true. to buy anything within commutable distance, even on like really healthy salaries, still would have been a real struggle. So, yeah, yeah I feel like we have less but nicer things. And, yeah, no one judges you for not being able to come to the, you know, two so weeks in the, Fiji. So all the Kiwis moving to Australia are a little bit in for a shock. Like you may be making more money, but you're going to have to drive you know people don't even drive they think like driving i used when i was in wellington we would drive to auckland in a day and people thought that was crazy i know i know that that blows everyone's mind too like right. i was like mate i'm in the back of a 14 year old toyota camry for 16 hours for our one holiday in a year no right. aircon no we're going to queensland <laughs> we're going there with two toilet stops so don't drink anything kids that's how we get exactly roll. don't drink anything kids don't drink anything so yeah, no, that is like, they will. And we've actually had quite a few people in our office go over to our Sydney office mm. and all of them said, oh no, I need to get some new clothes and I need to get my hair done. And they've noticed it yep. straight away. Straight. I and, mean, I don't know what it is about Sydney though. Everybody is so gorgeous. I'm like walking no. down the city and I'm just like, are we being serious here? Like, I mean, I'm on a, like a ferry. I went on a ferry and everybody is, I'm looking like everybody's getting on there. They don't work, like work clothes, but like stunning. Like yeah. everybody. And I was it's like. It's really cool. It's the city. It's the hottest place. I mean, wow. <laughs> and it is very aspirant in that way. And like you do, you do catch on to that. Like you live, you kind of live and play pretty hard, but it is very like outwardly focused, I would it say. Is. And then you get on a ferry and you're just looking around going, how can there be this many multi-millionaire CEOs in one place like right. and you just look at all these places and you're like I will never have this mm -hmm. yet I am like, doing really well in life and working really hard whereas okay. here we're like we're working pretty hard we're doing some good work <laughs> doing the best work of our careers but it's not that frustrated with the inefficiencies or like do you feel like people um, are you know yes I do but I think diminishing my role really helped with that so yeah, okay. I now a copywriter which I love and when I see any of that sort of stuff go on I just go not my problem not my pay grade I'll just come out come down here pedal my puns bring it back up oh my gosh serve it up so, so yeah like they were pedal very intentional puns. choices there. <laughs> so, it's not certainly there's very intentional choices because we knew it was going to be a different yeah. life but it does feel kind of fitting for like this this next bit, but yeah, inefficiencies. I just refer to it fondly as island time. Yes. Like everyone is just, no one's in a real <laughs> hurry, to change, but there's some beautiful parts of that as well. So I used to get really frustrated, still do to be honest with the public transport, mm -hmm. because I'm like, you've got these beautiful trains and the nicest people driving them and running them. And they've done so much work to the rail and it has really improved a lot. And you can tell everyone's working really hard but I would get frustrated when they would run like 10 minutes behind and 15 minutes behind. And then I'm like, what do I care? No one's going to chastise me for being late. No oh. one even knows if it's coming in. And then one day there was, <clears throat> we were sitting on the train and a ticket check person came through and hardly anyone, it's very casual here, as I'm sure you remember, yep. hardly anyone tags on. They're just like, oh, well. And the ticket person checked this lady's ticket and she said, I'm so sorry, I didn't tag on at the other place, whatever. She just didn't tag on. And he said, where are you getting out at? And she said, Richard And he said, well, we can't have you tagging off there because you won't be able to get out. He said, give me your ticket and at Kingsland we'll stop and I'll run out and tap on for you just so you're able to get out. Oh, to 100%. Britta. I can see that happening. Yeah. And I just thought in Sydney they would have gone $370 fine. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Next. <gasps> $370. Oh, I know. I've been on the train and didn't have enough cash because I didn't have the card because I barely went. And I'm like, oh, I forgot I have to have cash. And the guy's like, how much you got? He's like, we're good. <laughs> you know, like yeah. you just never have to worry. It's so nice. No, you don't. 
And everybody is just so kind in that way. And actually I have like a very cute anecdote. We got married last December and my mum and her friends flew over and the day before she said, I'd really like to go to church. And I said, okay, like Googling church to go to. Yeah. And we got there and of course we're the only like white people, Pakia, in the whole place. So oh, the priest okay. came up and said, where are you from? You know, welcome. And mum was like, oh, I'm from Australia. My daughter's getting married tomorrow. And he's like, oh, that's so amazing. At the end of the service, he asked me to walk up to the altar and there's all these like aunties sitting either side going, good practice for tomorrow, sweetheart. And they're all like praying for me. And then it turned out that the organist was an opera singer and oh. he said, I would get a little gift for you. And the organist proceeded to sing a full aria to my face in front of all of these people, 100 people all bawling their eyes out. I was bawling my eyes out. Mum was bawling my eyes out, her eyes out. And we got to the end of it and mum just said, what are the chances of that happening? And I said, in New Zealand, pretty high, actually. Yeah, <laughs> true. Like, oh, my gosh, I love it's that. Just stuff like that. And they just said, you know, forget your husband, marry him. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And it was like this really right? hilarious <laughs> moment. And they, like, all the church ladies got together to find the video for me so I could have the video. Mm. And it's just like, oh, they're just so full of love. I love yeah. that. That is such a good story. Remember that every time someone's really slow at doing something or dawdling at the checkout, I'm like, remember that time? Remember the really nice? <laughs> really nice time. No, that's good. Focus on that. That's excellent. That's a good strategy. <laughs> so do you, not, do you don't find yourself getting bored because, you know, all the activity and now it's. Oh, to be honest, no, because the first year we were planning a wedding well not that I wanted one but we ended up with one and that's a lot of work mm -hmm. and then this last year we've been looking for a home so oh, that okay. takes up a lot of time right. if you're working full-time for sure yeah yeah and I really love work so I'll often be squirreling away at work and yeah as you kind of get into that second year you also make some friends so I made some really good friends um of my neighbors so, you know, instead of going out to big lunches, we'll go to each other's houses and we'll have like an equally bougie spread. Don't get me wrong. Yes, um, I know it's true. And yeah, we'll go to All Blacks games. We still go to concerts. We went to like a music gig last night underneath my partner's workplace, which was great. Hmm. So no, I don't find myself getting bored, but I don't know whether that's got as much to do with New Zealand as being 35. Yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Not 25 anymore. Right. No, that's true. A lot of my younger clients have said like, oh, there's not a lot to do here. Well, I mean, like you shouldn't have, you know, moved to a teeny small town that basically has a dairy. So, you know, like well, you have to live in Auckland, you know, basically if you're 20. Yeah. That's my biggest thing. And even last night, because it was quite busy, actually, we were on K Road last night. Mm -hmm. And even when people come to visit, I just say come from Thursday to Saturday so that when we do go out, there is like a buzz in right. the restaurants and stuff. And my partner's actually from Hamilton, but bless, we were not moving there. So, but I, and I actually think if that is, you do have younger people, you need to be in Auckland, even Wellington and all my colleagues will say the same, like it's really taken a hit kind of culture wise in the last five years. Yeah. So if you're not going to have something to do every night of the week, like you do in Sydney and Melbourne, Right. but for the population size, like if you have somewhere this population size in Australia, like Newcastle's not got something going on every night. Right. It's That's still true. a country town in many it's ways. Important. Yeah, yeah. So we're lucky to have what we have, particularly, you know, comedy-wise, music-wise, theatre-wise generally, and some of the best restaurants in the world in like a food court here. Oh, that I know. Is, the, the food in Auckland is very good. <laughs> so much stuff here that's so world-class, and I often remind my Kiwi colleagues of that. So while everything seems bigger and brighter in Aussie, it's like, do you know you can walk in just an average cafe here and get an amazing meal? Do you know how hard amazing that is? Amazing meal. I can't, I miss that so much. I cannot eat that. I love breakfast. I love brunches. I can't get in. I can't. Like, don't give me these fried potatoes and this egg that's what yellow. I just, it's just this beautiful display that they would give you was, oh. And the produce. And I also yes, think too, like, you will pay a lot for meals out and brunches out. But yeah. again, I feel like New Zealanders are just such pragmatic people. They do the nice things less. Right. Although go for a day out and pay for brunch and bring some a snack to have in the afternoon. Exactly. 
Lots of people say to me, and I think they mean it as a derogatory thing in terms of New Zealand. New Zealanders say, oh, it's like Australia in the 70s. And I'm like, yeah, in like the best ways. Like kids can still walk themselves to school here. Like most of the time, you know, if kids are mucking up, any adult can go and just say, hey, cut it out, you know. Whereas yep. it just it was barely like that when I grew up in Australia. So it's a much more... Yeah, I feel like you could see that as a negative or you could look at the positives and just say, you know what, we're not all sitting at home on Black Friday sales, pressing refresh, refresh, refresh. Right. Everyone's going, I need a robot vacuum. Okay, guess we'll have a look, you know? No, totally. Yeah, like I'm really trying hard to not be turned into consumerism world, <laughs> you know, because like I oh, just no. I used to Hi. buy things, but it's like I can get it tomorrow at my door. I know I know well even just things like I was up with um, a girlfriend on the Gold Coast she can get groceries delivered in 20 minutes yeah that's how it is and they can pick you up some takeaway too if you don't feel like making it after that long you know ordering online yeah whereas here it's like you're lucky if you can get it in the same day oh yeah no (laughs) that being said I've got like a fishmonger a butcher and a fruit shop Mm. five minute walk away Five minute walk. That's fantastic. Yeah, no, and that's so good. And the food is so good. I so miss that. I'm just <laughs> curious about Canada. How is Canada different? Why don't we just throw that in? Because Vancouver is unique in its own. So I found it's really interesting because I'd done so little research, like an absolute idiot. I was working like a dog, honestly. We had a really big project and I just thought, I'll figure it out when I get there. I just need yeah. to finish up my right. work. So then I finished up my work and three weeks later we were there and I was like, oh. I feel as though Australians often, and again, it's like New Zealanders, we look to North America as every city must be bigger than Sydney. It's really not. Sydney's a really big, big city. And you don't realise that because I thought, oh, Vancouver is probably the same. What I found was Vancouver was very West Coast. Mm, Yeah. If I wanted like for like, I probably would have, Toronto probably would have been more like for like Mm. in terms of work culture. So I got to Canada. It took me a while to get a role, but luckily um, luckily I did. And it was a very similar role to what I had. And I remember um, my CEO sitting me down about six weeks in and he said, listen, you've done more work in six weeks than we probably expected you to do in six months. Oh. And you're kind of freaking the team out. So maybe just tamp it down a little bit. <laughs> wow, really? Okay. Yeah. And it might have been the company. They were a big privately owned 20-year-old payments company, plenty of cash. Like they weren't hard hustling, but it was a very West Coast attitude I found. I'm like, oh, this is not like a main city kind of city. Mm. They're very lifestyle focused as well. Winter would come around. Everyone would just pick up their bags and leave at like 3, 3.30 because it started getting dark, which I got in the end. 3.30? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah which I got in the end because it's like you're exhausted or they just want to go up and ski or like do something mm-hmm. else. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I found I found it a bigger cultural difference there to the feedback. Here, people will give it, but maybe not to your face. No, right. <laughs> no comfort. Whereas there they would just say, everything's great, 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 till it all goes out and then they'll tell you everything that was wrong with it. Oh, hmm. Not that there ever was really anything massive, but they were very anti-confrontational, I would say. Uh, Okay. Okay. Um, And I think I just, it was absolutely crazy. I'd landed there and I think I was about five weeks into the job and I turned 30 and I was like, well, I'm not sitting by myself on my 30th birthday. So I invited my team to have my 30th birthday, like a psychopath. Found out later, they don't really do that. (laughs) Oh. Really? They, were, they all came though. We just went for like wine and cheese. Like I booked yeah. like a wine and cheese room. Um, and I found out they sort of hadn't really hung out just as a team outside of work. Oh. I just thought it was normal. And then, yeah, I was like quite close with all of them, working with them for the next three years. And, but I'd never, we never really went to each other's houses or anything. Mm. And we had lots of, as you do, you make expat friends. So you end up at all their barbecues and right. whatnot. And, it was sort of restrictions had just lifted when we were leaving. And my friend Josh said, we really want to be able to say goodbye, Kitty, but we can only do eight people 
which eight do you want? And I said, just whoever can come and make it work because not everyone's comfortable. And we had this lovely dinner. And as I was leaving, two people at the table started to cry. And they were just like, you are just one of the most beautiful friends we've ever had. And I thought, oh my gosh, I thought we were like friendly. Right. But but yeah, they just like weren't that. Very, yeah. yeah. They just weren't very um, you know, Australians and Americans are much more forthright with our like, oh my God, I think you're so great. I just thought, oh my gosh, I just did not really clock that they felt that deeply about me. I thought we're mates and we get along. Um yes. and still remain really great friends but I thought I could have gone if I'd never have left I would have gone this whole time thinking we weren't even that close <laughs> no right oh I've had that experience is leaving both sides people come out of the wood like like oh, what am I gonna do and they're all upset I'm like oh really <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that was really interesting because they're just not quite as um quite as forthright they're much more reserved but also mm. Again, with public transport with Canada, it's always public transport that makes me see the best in people. The cutest thing they would do if people were lined up, you know, for a bus and the bus kind of pulled up halfway in the line, everyone would reshuffle so that they would be in the same order that they were in. Whereas I'm like, in Sydney, someone would push you in front of a bus if they thought they could get a seat quicker oh, than you. Uh, <laughs> no, no one gives a shit. No, about Canadians that. are so nice. I spent a lot of time there this summer and I'm like, what the heck? I thought Kiwis were nice. This is like the thing they just over the top when I go to get gas. And when I, and I'm like, what? Okay. <laughs> no. Yeah. And it's like really, yeah, it's really fascinating. And as I said, I found it um, less of a culture shock there. I think too, because they're used to working with probably more Australians than really Kiwis that we're used to working yeah. with. Unless Are there a lot of Australians? Did you meet a lot when you were in Canada? All Australian pub for a start. Oh. And on Anzac Day, which is our kind of Memorial yes. Day, yes. the like head of the um, New Zealand consulate laid their wreath at the, you know, Memorial. Right. And the barman of the owner of the pub of mm -hmm. Australia laid our wreath. So that really tells you something about it. Australian culture in Vancouver. Moose is down under, it was called. Shout out. Um, okay. Yeah. It hosted. There's millions of Australia. We used to call Whistler Australia because you would always just, you just hear only Australian accents up there because everyone goes to work at Whist. Really? Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. I'm going to Whistler next year. Oh my gosh. I'm dying. It was one time going into a restaurant, someone asked me for my phone number and I blurted out my Australian phone number. And oh. she's like, that theme right and I just went oh it's your accent like I just defaulted straight back to my Aussie number really because like <laughs> yeah. they're everywhere and yeah we made friends with tons of Aussies over there and there are Kiwis as well but mm. just by sheer volume um you would see the Kiwis come out on uh rugby games. oh rugby yes yes of course <laughs> so yeah we see a lot of them then oh my goodness and if we're overseas we're like best friends but you get back here and Kiwis are like, ugh, typical Australian. <laughs> yeah, no, there is definitely an attitude. I mean, I don't, they don't really mean anything bad by it, but it's definitely, there's lots of comments and they're always saying it to me. When I moved to New Zealand, they always asked me if I was Canadian. And I'm like, really Canadian? And so for an American to be asked if they're Canadian, it's like, we don't even acknowledge they exist. Okay, like, why are you thinking I'm a Canadian? You know? <laughs> And like, and so they, then I would ask them, like, they would see that I would be upset that you're asking if I'm Canadian. And they would be like, well, no, we thought you were American, but we were afraid to ask in case you were wrong. Cause the Canadians really get mad. If you assume. Yes. Same, same with Kiwis I have found. <laughs> and yeah, it was funny because same thing, like my, you know, I had heaps of family flying over for the wedding. Everyone's like, where are we flying into again? Like, none of them had ever really been to Auckland and I think most of them like we went for a wine tour to Waiheke Island which is this yes, beautiful island. I love Waiheke Island are you kidding me gorgeous and there were like 10 people who said yes 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 we definitely want to do that nine out of ten of them I think thought we were like catching a boat to an island where there'd be like a stand with some glasses <laughs> they oh. didn't have any concept that there'd be like an entire population living over there they were all just like blown away. They're blown away by the infrastructure because again, they just don't think about it that much. And, but in a different way in that like Australians really revere New Zealand in a way yeah. that 
doesn't it's not reciprocal and I think probably Jacinda Ardern is in part yeah, responsible probably. for it. yeah but they always think oh we love New Zealand but we just won't go there until we're older because we'll go from a long flights when we're young and then we'll or New uh, Zealand will, oh interesting yeah. oh that's mm. very interesting okay but yeah I've had friends who've come over but often if they have they might do Queenstown for like a long weekend or something right not tons that will come it's down it's fascinating and do like- that people didn't really know Auckland I mean it's just not that far like I I come back here I've literally had arguments with people like no you've been in Australia this whole time I'm like no I haven't I've been <laughs> in like I think I know where I've been <laughs> you know like in oh. their mind it's the same from here it's the same there's no difference yeah. it's like okay yeah. it is different <laughs> but yeah. I understand why different. you think why you think it's the same <laughs> for a start I don't need to brush my boots when I go walking around Australia for yeah. <laughs> another start, nothing will kill me here in New Zealand everything will kill me in Australia everything right <laughs> um <laughs> it's like lots of those and uh yeah in Australia the indigenous culture very sadly not really there in New Zealand very alive I actually have one yeah, story right. that Still mortified by we were on holidays with my sister-in-law my brother-in-law and he has a boat and they were down at Lake Topo and yeah. it was kind of late in the day and Matt said would you like to go and see the Maori carvings like because yeah. it'll be quiet normally there's heaps of boats and I was like oh my god yes we're like in the boat like, this is going to be so amazing and it's just this like sheer wall with these huge beautiful carvings that just like goes and meets the water of the lake really I have like, been there they're kind of like around a corner, like they're oh. just amazing. And I was just looking at them and we're bobbing there on the water. And I just said, oh my gosh, like, how did they do that? And Matt just looked at me and he went, I don't know, probably scaffolding. They're probably like 30 years old. <laughs> and to me, looking at like indigenous carvings are like tens of thousands of years and, right no that's true it's the youngest country like where i come yeah. from if we're looking at something like that it's ancient <laughs> whereas here i don't know a bit of scaffolding like an idiot <laughs> okay just, oh god okay the culture here is not dead the culture here is not dead <laughs> okay that's so funny i love that i love that i love yeah that's what's so wonderful about new zealand is the 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 implementation and integration of Maori culture or Pacifica culture even and just in everyday life like my it's funny my kids came one of my my youngest came home last week and was like yeah they asked me a question and in, in school they asked like what's the language of New Zealand and they, he said it's English and I was like okay really <laughs> like are you serious? Like, I'm like, there's three languages. There's, they have their own sign language, the video and English. And he was like, oh, that's true. And he's like, well, I don't really know. To, I'm like, you know, so many words, you have no idea. Like you could just start talking and they would think that you are fluent. Same you know, it's one of the songs. <laughs> oh, like, like for body parts and colors yeah. and days of the week. And even, you know, whenever my anyone comes over here, I say, just turn on the news because you hear all these beautiful greetings. Mm-hmm. But also, I'm sure you miss it. How gorgeous is the news here? It's just so cute. Oh, it's so cute. And the things that people complain about and like, oh, my God. This is a real it's my favorite. It's my favorite thing. And Dan, the weatherman, is my favorite. He's kind of like jazz hands and... Yeah gets really cranky when the like teleprompter doesn't work he's just heaven I just love them all and like 50% of it's sport which is also the 50% best percent the sport yes and then you might get like a feel-good you know story about a guy who crowdfunded enough money to like buy a, a beach for the public so everyone could enjoy it like oh, some hard-hitting wow. news story like that <laughs> and then like maybe a bit of a ram raid and you're like oh that's a bit of a bummer but Right. here's a cat up a tree like it's the sweetest I love it because I when I got home to Australia after being in Canada my god the news had changed and it was just like whoa like it would make it it makes you think you're living in a third world country oh. crime 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 traumatic thing awful photo oh. first at the scene on fire and you're like this is one of the most affluent western world countries to exist and actually it's got pretty low crime rates why is everything so on alert and like 
ribbons going across the page and breaking news right, and like fear mongering oh, that happens like i it's so bad here i mean it's so bad here but like i it just i can't like people are like we're, we're we have we're the best and we have all this freedom like what <laughs> like what yeah. is your definition of that because i'm Can telling you you don't <laughs> like i just want dan the weatherman to tell me how many meals of rain is going to fall in Hamilton this week <laughs> god <laughs> give me a break and then like they really catch you at the end too and suddenly you're watching Hillary Barry and you're like no no seven sharp they sucked me in again but some less more good news stories about just other New Zealanders and yeah or you might put on a bit of um oh did you used to watch a country calendar no I didn't watch much tv oh man you missed out that's how I knew Dan was really homesick when we're in Canada because I would come home and I would hear outside the door the little soundtrack playing for Country Calendar. It's basically like sure. just a show where they like go to farms and they tell you about their business and stuff. Okay. <laughs> so cute. They got so many shows like that. No, they yeah. do. It's so many shows. And like, yeah. So for me, when I came back here, um, I was I kind of went in panic attack. I think I scared my ch- <laughs> you know, because like they would do things because they would just they, my my son just drew rode his bike to his cousin's house and I'm like you what yeah you know what I mean or like you know like I don't know like they're talking to someone or they're talking and I'm like no 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 you're not walking by yourself you know what I mean like it's we've entered a different world and I went into like mama bear mode and panicking because like I know how you're thinking and I know what you're not aware of (laughs) and it is that whiplash and also don't you just think as much as like I said well, haven't said, but one of the hardest things I find is how down on New Zealanders, how down on New Zealand some New Zealanders are. Oh, <laughs> I know. Just- and I spent my entire time there, eight years of this place is amazing. And these are the six reasons why, because you guys yeah. you have no idea what you have. You have no idea what you have. And you just think, yeah, for kids, like they had this thing when in my old suburb, they probably have it here, I don't know, but called the walking school bus where like an adult volunteers and they just stand at a place and the kids oh. who go to the school line up and then the adult's like, okay, walking school bus. And then the adult, they all like like little ducklings behind them and of like a different parent volunteers every day to do the walking school bus to school. Are you serious? Isn't that the cutest thing you've ever it's heard in your life? Thing. It is the cutest thing. I mean, the play center the the way that they do everything I was just like this is like a kid heaven I know but I could totally understand how you get back home and you're like okay we need to recalibrate here because recalibrate yes and I'm not, I don't want to scare them and I don't want to put in fear and I don't want to you know change this situation but like just let, let's just run it past me first <laughs> don't the world. It. and I also feel like here I've just found every single person I've met know someone and that is kind of my back my theory is there's like this beautiful islander kind of culture that is just beautiful and accepting to everyone mm. but then there's also like don't screw anyone over because you are going to see them again oh, oh this you is my w- number one advice to people is do not burn bridges because it will come back and haunt you i cannot i have seen it i haven't done it but i have seen it especially if you were to come into new zealand with your you know, aggressive, let's say attitude, it would have been bad. And then it would just, you can't live that down. Like I had so many American friends at, at work or whatever. And like, I would go to like hire them on a project and they'd be like, no, we're not bringing them back. Yeah. And I was like, oh, they burned the bridge. Okay. <laughs> I didn't realize, cause it's hard to recover from that. And everybody, particularly in Auckland, like the amount of people I've met who know someone else I've met Like to the point where one of my girlfriends for the wedding, she'd sent us these beautiful champagne glasses and she'd put the wrong address and it was the address across the road. And it was like the last thing I really needed to be dealing with. But she said, I've got, I've I've got a call from the girl and she said, she'll walk them over to your apartment. And I said, okay, that's lovely. I'll meet her downstairs. I got downstairs. This is the day after the wedding. And she's like, here you are. Congratulations. She's like, I actually know your photographer and I've seen some of your sneak peeks. You looked beautiful. Oh my gosh. Are you serious? I love that. And yeah, my makeup person was friends with my tan person. My tan person recommended my eyebrow person. I have since done like a makeup class and two of the girls who um, I was speaking to for the wedding were at that makeup class. So it's all very. Oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Which is lovely though, because 
you know, even if you don't get a chance to catch up with someone, you're like, oh, I don't know. I saw that person. Yeah, she's going great. Yeah, yeah. We should all catch up sometime. Oh, that's true. It's like they don't even need social media. So <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> really don't. <laughs> no. we really don't. Whatever you do is going to get back to somebody. And I remember we moved, we left our apartment. I was really sad because it was just like, I just loved it there. And I had these beautiful neighbors and how hilarious. I was moving four suburbs away and um, did farewell drinks, mm. honestly. And I just was like teary and I was just like, it just was a really, you know, lovely place. And I miss my neighbors. The Saturday we moved in here, I was like, okay, I need to go up to the mall and just get some things and literally ran into my neighbor the next day no. in my new at that mall and I was like I have acted like I'm moving to the bush <laughs> oh my god but that's I'm, so good to know even in Auckland oh absolutely and that Monday Dan said oh I saw Anna on the train I was like okay we haven't actually moved that haven't actually away. moved you're fine I didn't, I didn't need to have a dramatic farewell drinks actually um because <laughs> yeah I could throw a rock and hit them so it's fine <laughs> But in Sydney, four suburbs away is like, see ya in 10 years. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> a lot of people. Oh my gosh, Christy, thank you so much for joining me today and talking about your experience and how much you love New Zealand. And I just think that your little personal stories have gonna hit are gonna hit home and are really great. So thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. And if anyone's thinking about it, I would just say, get over here. It's a wonderful place and depending on, you know, your attitude and what, you know, your values are, I think if both of those things align, you will find it to be like this perfect little paradise that I do as well. I know. I totally agreed. So if you are interested in moving to New Zealand, definitely um, click my free course in the description and it'll get you started because I kind of have a, a whole community that's a one-stop shop for helping people get to New Zealand and just kind of number one, figuring out if it's right for you. And number two, if you can, because it's not the easiest country to get into. Not We're not all Australians. So um, and if you get here, hit me up because I'll probably see you in Britomart anyway. So, yes. you know, <laughs> <laughs> love that. Yeah, love that. So go ahead and post comments and questions um, that you have for Christy and um, yeah, we'll get them to her. So thank you for joining us. We'll see you. Bye.